Okay, we're going to look at 2.3, which is called Postulates and Diagrams. Um, all right, um, so let's name this plane using one letter. You can you name planes using three points that are, that are on a plane. So you could call this plane ABC, but then I wouldn't be naming it using one letter. So to use one letter, I'm going to have to call this plane D. Um, the reason I chose D is because... D isn't a point. It doesn't, it's not, but it doesn't have a little dot by it, right? It's a little confusing because it's right by that corner and you might assume that they're talking about point D being the corner. But typically if you have a letter that's inside um, a, uh, a plane like this, like inside the, uh, the, the figure that represents the plane, then it would be a name of the plane itself. If I wanted to name this point, um, I might put an say I wanted to call that point E there, I might put an E on the outside of the, uh, of the parallelogram that's representing the plane there, okay? Um, or you could put a dot by it if you wanted to, to be sure. But if it doesn't have a dot by it and it's inside, it's usually just the plane itself. So I'm just gonna say it doesn't have a dot by it. Okay, all right, then we've got a bunch of postulates here in this section, and the first one is called the two-point postulate. And this just says through any two, two points, there is exactly one line. Okay, so if I'm going to draw two random points over here, okay, here's two random points, there's only going to be one line that goes through both of those points. It would look something like this, right? Just freehanding it there, but yeah, only one line connects those two points. You could say that two points determine a line is another way you can think about that idea, okay? Um, the line point postulate, a line contains at least two points. I'm gonna be honest with this one. I never really, I mean, yeah, it contains two points. It contains many more than two points. I don't understand how that's useful, but it's in the book and there it is. That's the line point postulate. Okay, well, the line intersection postulate says that if two lines intersect, then they're going to intersect at exactly one point. Okay, so when two lines intersect, they intersect at a point as, um, as described in that diagram. Of course, lines don't have to intersect because they could be parallel. They could also be skew. They could be on different planes altogether. Um, but when they do intersect, they're going to intersect at one point. All right, the three-point postulate. Through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. Okay, so two points are going to determine a line, but three points are going to determine a plane. Now, they have to be non-collinear. I could put a third point on this line, and that wouldn't determine uh, a, a plane. But when you've got three non-collinear points, then it will determine a plane. And here's how I think about this. If you can draw a triangle using the three points, well, that's a little patch of this plane. And then we could tell what the, where the rest of the plane would go. Of course, the plane goes on infinitely in all directions, but it's going to be determined by that little triangle because that little triangle is a little piece of the plane. And that's the three-point um, postulate. Okay. All right. Um, moving down, we've got the plane point postulate. These are really hard to memorize because all the names are so similar, but here that's how they are in this book. So if two points lie in a plane, okay, if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them also lies in the plane. So for example, points A and C here are on plane D, so that means line AC the entire line would be on that, that plane. Um, and, you know, the line goes on uh, forever in both directions, but the plane also goes on forever in all directions. So, yeah, that entire line would be on that plane since those two points are on, on the plane. Okay. Okay, on the next page, our last postulate here is called the plane intersection postulate. And... Uh, so we talked earlier about how if two lines intersect, they're going to intersect at a point. If two planes intersect, then they're going to intersect at um, a line, okay? So 
So it's, it's kind of like the spine of a book here, right? The spine would be the line. Now, what some, the, the mistake that I sometimes see people uh, make is that they'll think, oh, it's going to be a line segment because they're thinking of those, those uh, parallelograms as being the entire planes, and then they're just thinking, oh, just this part of it is the intersection, so it's a line segment. Well, no, those planes go on forever, so that means that their intersection is going to go on forever, and so it's going to form a line, okay? So two lines intersect at a point, two planes intersect at a line. Okay, and then we're going to use this diagram to, uh, to write a bunch of examples of these different postulates. Um, okay, so the two-point postulate, you might want to have that previous page in front of you. So two-point postulate says through any two points there exists exactly one line. So I just need to pick... I'm going to pick uh, one of the lines that's drawn on this diagram, and I'll choose two points from it. So uh, I'm just going to say through, um, I'll, I'll pick, well, I'll pick uh, J and K, maybe, the, that line's going through. So I'm going to say through points J and K lies line JK. Through points J and K lies... line jk i'm just going to use the symbol for line so i've got that little arrow above the jk there okay there's my example all right so um we've got the line point postulate a line contains at least two points so i'm gonna say all right line lm contains line <laughs> points l and m So there's at least two points. So, you know, K's on there as well, and many other unnamed points are on that line as well. Okay, line intersection postulate. This just says um, when two lines intersect, they intersect at a single point. So the two lines I have graphed here uh, are, are going to intersect at point K. So I'll say um, line LM. Oh, and I wrote out the word line that one time for some reason. Line LM and... Um, well, make this lines L, M, and J, N. Those are going to intersect at point K. Okay, it's the only place they intersect. All right, the three point postulate says that uh, through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. So what I want to do here is pick three points that are non-collinear. And you could really pick any three points in this diagram, but I want to pick either three points that are on plane R or on plane S. You could mix and match, but then we'd get a plane that's not one of the planes that's pictured. So just to make it a little easier to... Uh, I'll, I'll, choose, uh, I'll choose these three. So if, uh, if I, I can connect those three and I get a triangle, so then I know they're non-collinear, they're not in a straight line, right? So I wouldn't want to choose J, K, and N, for example, um, because those are collinear. But these are non-collinear, so that I've got a little patch of, of um, plane R, so I'm going to say that, um, that those three points determine plane R. Right, they're all on this plane, okay? All right, the plane line postulate says, what does the plane line postulate say again? So this should say the, this is a typo here, I gotta fix this, this should say the plane point postulate, that's why I was confused here. So I'll fix that on the, uh, on the, um, on the handout. Okay, the plane point postulate says that if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them lies on the plane. So, um, all right, so points, uh, for example, points J and N um, are on plane S, so that means line J N is going to be on plane S. So that's what I'm going to write.
Points J and N are on plane S. So line J N is on plane S. Okay. Plane intersection postulate, that just says when two planes intersect, they intersect at a line. So the two planes I have picture here intersect at this line. So I'm going to describe that. Planes R and S intersect at line LM. Okay, and there's my examples of all those. Okay, for the next set of questions, I'm going to use the same diagram, and I've got kind of some true or false questions. They're not exactly true or false because I'm just um, going to determine whether I can um, whether I can assume the statement is true based on on the diagram. Okay, so let's just read through these. Planes R and and S are going to intersect at LM. Well, yeah, they do. That's what I just said that right there, right? These two planes intersect at that. So, yes, I can assume that that's true. All right. Points O, L and Q, O, L and Q. So, here let me mark those. O, L and Q. It says those three points are coplanar. Well, yeah, they're all on plane R. And technically, really, you could choose any three points in the universe. They're always going to be coplanar because there's always at least one plane that you can draw through any three points. Often they just mean the planes that are drawn in diagrams, and those are th all on plane R. So my answer is yes there. Okay, line LM lines on lies on plane S. Well, this is on plane S. It's on both planes, right? It's on plane S. It's on plane R as well. So the answer to C and D are both going to be yes. Because this is asking is LM on plane R. Sure, it's on both of those planes, okay? How about JN? Is JN on plane R? Well, here's JN, but this one is plane R, so this line is not on plane R. Only point K of that line is on line R, but the whole line is not, so that's, that's going to be a no. Okay. And then L, K, and M lie on only one plane. Well, this is where we're kind of talking about three points determining a plane. But if I choose three, these three points, they're all on this line. And they don't determine a plane because there's, there are many planes that contain this one line. Two of them are in this diagram. Plane R and plane S both contain that line. So no, they're on, they're on actually an infinite amount of planes because I could take any of these planes and kind of swivel it along that line and get another plane that works. Um, but you can see the two that are pictured there. So definitely not one. There's an infinite amount of planes that, that uh, that contain that line, okay? And that's the end of the section, and I'll see you next time.